The big challenge going forward in a world where interest rates have risen by 125 basis points, one and one and a quarter percent uh, over a fairly short period of time from mid 2017 to uh, the fall of 2018, is that this is going to put more pressure on highly indebted Canadians. As you may know, Canadians have, have, have piled up a lot of debt over the last decade, decade and a half, which was fine because you know the, the, the debt went up because mostly the number one asset had gone up in value. So when you think of, uh, especially in the housing, because most of that debt is mortgage. And uh, mortgage represent about 70% of household debt in, in, in Canada. So when uh, 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 the, the value of your residential asset moves up, those coming into the market need to pay more for to buy a home. Therefore, they take take up more 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 uh, more debt to to make that uh, that investment. So th that's fine. But at the end of the day, it still makes uh, uh, household more vulnerable, more sensitive to higher interest mm -hmm. rates. So what it may do is that that the service of that debt, so the debt service ratio, so the the the, the in principal and interest payment as a percentage of uh, household income is likely. We've seen it starting to go up, and you have to expect it's going to go up a lot higher. It's still, in our view, not necessarily cause for alarm in and of itself, but for a certain fraction, a certain portion of those uh, households, it could cause trouble. It could, it could be a little bit too much. I don't think necessarily the bigger risk is going to be on the ability to service that debt, but I think the bigger risk is in terms of what's going to be left over to spend on other stuff. After you pay your taxes, after you pay your mortgage, how much money is there left to spend on other expenditures? Uh, so what we've been uh, uh, warning, I guess, uh, uh, folks like you over the last you know, couple of years is that things like discretionary spending might come under pressure. We don't think that that uh, 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 households are going to cut spending altogether. They're not going to you know, hunker down and not spending anymore, but they're going to be a lot more cautious and selective on the kind of spending they're going to do. So for some, depending what business you're in, that kind of dynamic might be, might complicate things a little bit uh, more. Now, think back a few years when the economy was coming back, the confidence was building, uh, you had exceptionally low interest rate and the prospect of higher interest rate was so far, it was so distant, in, uh, distant to the future that people would just say, okay, we need a new car, let's get a new car, and we'll just, you can get, a, a new car for uh, you know uh, 72 months zero zero interest on it why not now when your interest rates are a little bit higher things get a little bit tighter people are gonna uh, uh, consider these uh, decisions a lot more we think uh, and this is especially true for for Ontario I mean uh, this Ontario BC and Alberta are the three provinces where household debt is higher and where uh, the sensitive, sensitivity to higher interest rate is highest as well. Uh, so what the increase we've seen to date, that 125 basis point increase in interest rate, we haven't seen it uh, uh, filtered down to the cons entirely to the consumer quite yet. You still have a lot of people with mortgages that haven't renewed yet at a higher rate. Uh, so this is going to be that. So the, those past moves and in interest rates are still going to have an effect over the next little while, and possibly last next couple of years as well. So that's something else to keep in mind. That even though the Bank of Canada is hitting the pause button, uh, that uh, the, the 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 past increases are still going to have an effect going forward. It's still, what we call a, a lag effect. And just to illustrate the the, the what I, I've just. Uh, mentioned with respect to what higher interest rate will do in terms of squeezing, make you no, know, forcing some households to tighten the belt a little bit is on 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 the consumer spending side of things. So I'm showing here retail sales that already last year were more or less the that's the growth in retail sales. So, so retail sales are still growing, but not at the same rate as what we saw in back 2016 and 17, for example. And actually, we saw last year that that rate of growth was cut in about half. And we don't see it picking up you know, over the, either this year or next year. We're kind of in a low, slower growth kind of 
uh, 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 kind of environment now, which it, which is fine, which is fine. We just have to 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 know it and accept it that the kind of what the the years that we saw in sixteen seventeens were that that those were the exceptions, not the new norm going forward. And by the way, that's that's by design, eh? In terms of for, for the Bank of Canada, this is what the Bank of Canada can, Bank of Canada wanted to do by raising interest rates is slow things down and to keep it on a more sustainable path going forward.